This rock child is rocket child. Rocket child. Rocket child. <laughs> it's rocket child. Rocket child. Yeah. Hey, this is Rocket Child. So, I recently made my own book, as in I, I bound it. This is probably the second book I've ever bound. It still needs a lot of work to perfect the technique, but I'm pretty proud of it. I've been interested in... I've been interested in... Oh. I've been interested in learning how to make books since I was probably 16 years old um, when I was making manga and little photo comics and things like that. However, I realize now um, as I was going through tutorials that bookbinding is actually quite a difficult process. So I didn't record a full walkthrough tutorial video like I normally do because when something is very new to me, I often have to concentrate fully on doing that technique properly, that I don't have the ability to record and to do the process at the same time. Or rather, this video would be more a blog style walkthrough on how I made it and different challenges and processes I had to go through. So. And I also took some photos during the process and I'll be able to put them on the screen. So this is a hardcover type book. I didn't want to just bind a book and have it look like something you could buy in the store because that seems sort of redundant. Instead, I wanted it to look like a, a bit of a fantasy tome sort of book, or at least that's my end goal. My end goal is to have a fantasy style book. There are quite a few tutorial videos on bookbinding online that I, I went and looked through to figure things out. The Nerd Forge is a really good channel um, in learning how to do fantasy style books. Another channel called Sea Lemon uh, had some good tutorials on bookbinding processes for beginners. So those are the ones that I used. For the first thing, I made this book binding press. As you can see here, it's two wooden surfaces, so boards. And I've put in bolts into each corner. And the idea is uh, during book binding, you have to constantly pressure to your to either papers, to your books, so that when it dries, it's has, um, it doesn't warp. Now usually other projects I would just go and look for anything heavy I had in my house like different types of books or something and stack it on top. However you end up with this really big tower and you can't really distribute the weight evenly. So I went to my local maker space and borrowed the power tools there and made the holes in the corners. Then I put in some bolts and use wing nut washers to be able to tighten the boards every time I use it. So it's a fairly simple design, but it was quite useful. Then with the papers, I wanted it to have this weathered look. So I made a mixture of coffee and tea with some baking powder and then dyed the paper. Uh, a problem I found was when taking the paper out of the wet mixture, they would just get destroyed in my hands. Um, normal printing paper was not good enough, so I had to go and buy heavy cardstock paper. I think it's about 200 GSM. And once they were wet, I could at least take them out without them becoming destroyed and then put them in the oven 
to dry. So that was also something I needed to pay attention to because I didn't want to burn the paper. I needed to pay attention, so flipping it over. There's about... Uh, I'm not so sure about the book binding terminology. Not that good yet, but I believe each folded stack of papers, folded in half stack of papers, is called a signature. So I had four different pages stacked on top and folded in half and that made a signature and perhaps I might have had about so, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 of those. 11 of those put together and that is a text block. I got this little book binding kit online. It has really thick needles plus this thick thread which is waxed. Super easier and you get an owl which punctures the holes and then the book folding bone. So I used that, punctured the holes and sewed the pages together. I'm not so good at following tutorials really though. It's more like I just sewed intuitively and make it look nice. I also put thread in the spine um, or rope on the spine and I tried to get the raised spine. In the end it didn't work. <laughs> I still need to work on this. I'm not prepared to instruct others on how to do it. But how it works is you just have the paper part and I had that in the paper clamp so First of all, you clamp the papers together so that after, after dyeing the paper in the coffee mixture, the paper still gets a little bit wrinkly. So you fold them together and then clamp it so you get a solid text block. Next, I had to maneuver to get it right angle. Uh, I used really big bulldog clips with paper in between so it wouldn't the paper I just dyed and I needed to sew the pages together so I used my ruler to measure it against the spine using inches so that all the markings were on the same side then I used the owl punch to make little holes and sewed back and forwards through the holes then I put some rope along the spine so that it would have more structural integrity and survive longer and sewed in between trying to get the rope included inside. So that's all on the inside of this part here. Then I'd have to put some paper glue and a little piece of paper across as well so that would all dry together in a solid section because realistically every time you open your book to read or write you're damaging the spine through that opening and closing motion. So that's why this part has to be really strong. Then I tried to tighten the rope against the, the spine so it would show up against as rope ridges, but it, it didn't show up at all. So that's something I'm going to have to work on in the future. Next I got some thick cardboard. My stationery shop had, it, it was late making cardboard or something. So I bought that and cut it to be a little bit bigger than the text block. I got some suede from the fabric sh shop. I was looking for a fake leather but it looked very mm, like spandex pants, very delicate, um, that it could just rip any time and look a bit tacky. So I found some suede like in the curtain area and got that and cut it to size and cut the corners off here. So what you need to do is then position it so you can get one cardboard piece here, the other cardboard piece here, and then the text in the middle. Then another piece of paper and glue it so that little piece is on the first part of your, your text block and then 
the whole of it covers the cardboard and the folded over fabric bits. And you do that for the front and the back side of the cover. Here it got a bit destroyed, so I think I need stronger paper next time. And so that'll be your, your cover cardboard pages. So this is the this is normal colored paper, obviously, bleached paper. And that's what the rest of these paper these pages started off with. So my front covers looked a bit too blank, boring. So next I made up a, another batch of coffee tea mixture and used a potato to stamp little dinosaur prints across to make the design a little bit interesting. And at the end, um, it, was just, it was just blue like this. And so I got a gold paint pen and drew up this design of moonflowers and I drew on the spine what I really wanted the rope to do. I wanted the rope ridges, so I just drew it on to make it a look a little bit <laughs> more interesting. I'm waiting in the mail to get some corner protectors because when I cu cut the corners off the fabric, I cut a little bit too much, so you could still see a bit exposed cardboard underneath, so the corner protectors will be middle, little metal clamps and those will go on onto the four corners. Here. Also, I tried to be, tried to position it well, but I think I got too much um, empty space in the bottom. So even with the clamp, it's still a bit hard to make sure everything dries in the right position. But overall, considering I haven't done it before, I think it's a pretty good attempt. And the pages smell, smell kind of nice. I don't know, they smell like biscuits, even though it's too coffee. Don't know. <laughs> so it's a cute, um, cute first start. And with practice, um, get better and I'll make more books so yeah mm, what else I don't know maybe in the future I need to figure out how to get this spine ridges to show I might look up better ways of sewing so that it's neater that the rope stands out and I tried to stretch some rope like this to shape the spine however Instead, it did the opposite and it, it creased the front and the back of the covers. I might have to figure out how to shape the, the spine without damaging the cover for next time as well. Overall, I think it's an adorable um, attempt. And I, I like having notes and writing things and sketching. So it'll be fun to use. Anyway, see you later. Bye. <laughs>